The Mediterranean Games. Part of the Olympic Committee, they were first held in Alexandria over 50 years ago. And now they're here in Tarragona, in Catalonia. Today with Catalan News, we take you behind the scenes of this exciting event and we show you everything about it. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Mediterranean Games have been in full swing since Friday. This is a date that the city has been awaiting for years, making all the necessary preparations. In fact, the original date was even postponed from 2017. This is a date that has brought people from all over the Mediterranean, including the most elite athletes there are. Three rings symbolically representing Africa, Asia and Europe, the three continents bordering the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. This is the official flag of the Mediterranean Games, a major sports event taking place every four years with the support of the International Olympic Committee. Tunis, Athens, Beirut, Naples, Barcelona, these are all cities that have hosted the Games since 1951, a list that from now on will also include Tarragona. In southern Catalonia, and with 130,000 inhabitants, the city is the smallest to ever host this sporting event. And the challenge was a big one. The Games were indeed supposed to take place last year, but they were postponed due to budget uncertainty caused by the political instability in Spain. Tarragona made a point of underlining its Roman heritage, and the Games mascot, Taracos, wears a helmet inspired by soldiers of the ancient empire. Preparations were underway up until the last minute to make sure everything was ready for the firing of the starting gun last Friday. Running until Sunday next week, almost 4,000 athletes from 26 countries are competing in 33 different sports events, including athletics, handball and swimming. They're staying in the village located in the Porta Ventura theme park with facilities such as gyms, medical centers and leisure areas. The Games also expect thousands of visitors, but the attendance has so far been scarce. Empty stands and almost deserted esplanades have been a controversial image that some say puts into question whether the city of Tarragona has succeeded in getting its own citizens interested in the Games. Athletes, trainers, judges and of course fans have travelled from several continents to be here in Tarragona today. And while the stands may not look too full, as you can see behind me, for some, being here is as exhilarating as being at the Olympics. It's a little Olympics to stay in the village, to meet uh, other uh, athletes from uh, many other disciplines. And it's beautiful because uh, uh, many of this uh, I saw on the TV. We are volunteers, so we are um, helping and we are seeing the, t um, the matches about handball. And we are very excited because we can interact with the players. It's it's great. It's it's a very great atmosphere. Uh, people from all the countries they all get along together. It's a very big event, and with a lot of athletes, uh, a lot of countries. So <laughs> it's a a nice experience. It's a very good experience because we met a lot of important humble players and. It's, it's, it's good. We are proud to, uh, um, to be here with all these nations, uh, with, uh, to meet the, this, uh, <laughs> uh, these players from other countries. I love the sport and for me that is amazing because I can be with the sports and with the people that do sport. But I don't know that it, it's a disaster for me because there's no one inside the installations and for example in the Parau we only well, there only are volunteers. And the games have also generated their fair amount of controversy, especially in politics. Three big players were invited to the games. The Catalan president Kim Torra, the Spanish head of government Pedro Sánchez, and the King of Spain, Felipe VI. Relations between them have been strained to say the least. In fact, Kim Torra even went to a protest against the Spanish monarch's presence. However, calls for dialogue continue and efforts to make this so are happening, but the task at hand is not an easy one. The need to sit down and talk continues at the centre of Catalan and Spanish politics. 
President Torra today met Podemos party leader Pablo Iglesias ahead of his meeting with counterpart Pedro Sánchez, scheduled for July the 9th. Iglesias emphasized the need for dialogue between the two administrations, no matter what their differences might be. Podemos y Unidos Podemos defendemos el derecho a decidir y la, re, y la realización de un referéndum. A partir de aquí, lo que yo le he transmitido al presidente es que el diálogo en política implica dialogar con quien no piensa como tú. Nosotros sabemos que el Partido Socialista no está de acuerdo con nosotros en este aspecto y que eso en ningún caso debe impedir el diálogo. Iglesias also said that Republican values are the guarantee to ensure that Catalonia and Spain remain united. Both sides made a positive assessment of the meeting. Torres' cabinet believes Podemos can have a major influence in Madrid, despite not being part of the new executive. The government spokeswoman said Torra found a number of points in common with Iglesias. Els punts de trobada que tenim entre Podemos i el govern de Catalunya en torn a temes de la república, dels drets, de les llibertats i per tant sí que hi ha hagut una aproximació. Ahead of July the 9th, Torra already met Pedro Sánchez on Friday at the opening ceremony of the Mediterranean Games. Torra also crossed paths with King Felipe and gave him two reports and a book on the referendum. The ceremony was preceded by some controversy, as Torra considered not attending unless the king apologized for not condemning Spanish police violence. In the end, in a half-empty stand, some of the spectators booed Torra and waved Spanish flags. On Saturday, the Catalan government suggested that spectators had been deliberately chosen to avoid pro-independence support. Also this weekend, Spain's People's Party's internal campaign to appoint a new leader began. One of the highlights was candidate for president Pablo Casado's comments on Catalonia. Casado said he doesn't at all feel sorry for the families of jailed pro-independence leaders. Meanwhile, former party leader and Spanish president José María Aznar went further. For him, the parties in favour of a Catalan state should be made illegal. The volunteers are a key element to these Mediterranean games. They're split into various teams to do various tasks, as you can see from the different colored shirts behind me. And here we are in the rest area provided by the games for the people who volunteered their time for this event. The volunteers are between 17 and 30 years old and are from 25 different countries. Hailing from France to Croatia, from Italy to Egypt, from the UK to Lebanon, those from abroad will have stayed in Tarragona for around a month by the time the event is over. And among the young helpers are even some refugees. Indeed today, new developments were seen on this topic. Following news of another seven boats stranded in the Mediterranean carrying around 1,000 refugees, Barcelona Mayor Ada Colau and Catalan President Quim Torra reiterated their offer to take in more of those who are in need of help. This may be the first time that many who've come to the Mediterranean Games discover Tarragona. This glittering seaside town was once the beating heart of the Roman Empire's settlement on the peninsula. To discover more about what the Mediterranean Games can and will do for Tarragona and what its impact has been, we can speak now with the deputy mayor of this place, Javier Villamajo. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hello. Hello. So, Mr. Villamajo, it's been a long road to get here. How does the Tarragona City Council evaluate what's happened? How do you see it positively, negatively? How do you evaluate citizen involvement in this event? Well, I, I think it's very important to start uh, making a clear statement about uh, what represented for Tarragona, the smallest city ever hosting these games, to organize the, seven, the 18th edition of the Met Games. Uh, because uh, for us, uh, it's been a really, really hard work to get here. And uh, you can see two clear uh, signs of success. The first is the construction, the, fit, the, the, the fact that we have been building new sport venues in the city and the municipalities surrounding Tarragona uh, to host these games. Uh, this represented an uh, important uh, economical effort not being alone uh, in this effort uh, by the municipality of Tarragona because the Spanish government, the Catalan government and also the provincial uh, government of Tarragona and Barcelona have uh, uh, provided uh, uh, funding for this uh, transformation of the uh, sports venues already in place. 
the only two new constructions in Tarragona were the, the Olympic swimming pool, uh, financed by the Spanish government, and the new uh, sports pavilion for uh, 5,000 spectators, which uh, has been founded completely by the government of Catalonia, representing overall uh, a budget of uh, nearly 70 million euros in, in new uh, sports facilities or renovation of those facilities already existing. And uh, the second uh, is the effort, of, uh, uh, the effort we have been uh, doing to make these uh, games the most uh, austere uh, of the history of the made games because we wanted to uh, give a clear uh, message to society that we wanted to save the money in those uh, items, in those aspects of the organization that we thought uh, that were not uh, needed. But uh, on the contrary, austerity does not mean uh, less ambition or less vision the, about what these games represent for our city and the, and the province of Tarragona. So what's the impact of the games when it comes to infrastructure, tourism? What's your assessment about that? I think we, we can uh, uh, explain the impact, the socio-economic impact of this event in three ways. First of all, is uh, obviously the construction of these new sport venues represented uh, hiring people. Uh, to work in these constructions. We have calculated that uh, uh, nearly 1,000 people directly and indirectly have been uh, working in these in this, uh, public works. Uh, this represented a very important opportunity for the construction sector and the companies in this sector. Secondly, there is the reputation, the promotion of the name of the city and the area of Tarragona coast, because uh, I think that uh, we always complain about the, uh, the fact that Tarragona is, it was not uh, very uh, well known, or at least not very known in, in, uh, in Spain or in the European and Mediterranean area. The goal of this uh, event, the, the organization of these games, the, the main goal was to promote Tarragona overseas and I think that we are getting enough attention of the public and enough attention of the media because uh, we have the Catalan Broadcasting Channel, the Spanish Broadcasting Channel and, and many uh, uh, local televisions uh, following the uh, organization of this event and the different competitions. I would like to add that uh, the volunteer program and also the educational program presented a clear message of uh, uh, citizens uh, cooperating and collaborating with this event. We uh, reached our target of 3,500 volunteers very soon in the process of, uh, uh, of uh, organizing this volunteer program and we had uh, at least registered as a volunteers nearly 8,000 people. So uh, this is a clear proof that the society of Tarragona and Catalonia was engaged with us. And Terragona has a lot to offer for those who are wanting to discover it. Can you tell us a little bit about what there is to see here, its culture, etc.? Well, in fact, uh, Tarragona was the one of the capitals of the Roman Empire in the Iberian Peninsula nearly 2,000 years ago. So uh, when we walk uh, through the city, you can see many monuments, uh, many uh, remindings about the presence of the Roman Empire in our city. Uh, those monuments were declared by UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2000. Uh, so for us, uh, 2000 was the beginning of a very actively uh, campaigning for uh, making people aware of the potential that our city had and also it's very important to uh, stress the gastronomy, the quality of the gastronomy, the quality of our beaches, the quality of not just the uh, monuments but also the cultural life, the social life and we are completely open uh, to uh, make uh, every uh, everyone uh, willing to come to us uh, to uh, ex experiment this, this feeling and Tarragona is clearly a Mediterranean city with a Mediterranean mood and a Mediterranean uh, um, uh, beat for the quality of life and the social cohesion and I think this, this, this event, the, the games, are, uh, are making these uh, goals uh, uh, easier to get. Thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Villamayor. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, time and uh, I hope that you are staying in Tarragona will be longer than expected. So, Tarragona is not the only place where the Mediterranean Games are taking place. It's happening throughout southern Catalonia and especially in the Tarragona region, which is famous for, you may not know this, one of Catalonia's most known cultural traditions. I'm talking about castells, human towers, of which you can see a statue right here behind me. Let's see what more the region has to offer. 
Home to this year's edition of the Mediterranean Games, Tarragona is worth visiting all year round. It was once a key part of the Roman Empire and ancient remains can still be seen to this day. The Roman amphitheater in Tarragona city is one highlight not to be missed, especially with its reenactments of those ancient times every year in the Tarkoviva festival. But there is more to Tarragona than ruins. The city and region boasts long stretches of beaches and hidden coves. The golden sand gives the coastline its name, La Costa Daurada, or Golden Coast in English. When relaxing on the beach doesn't cut it though, more adventurous holidaymakers can head to Port Aventura Wall. With the growing success of its latest attraction, Ferrari Land, the park forecasts more than 5 million visitors this year. For something a bit calmer, how about discovering the region's famous wines? The Priura designation of origin covers 11 municipalities, with many vineyards offering tasting days and tours. There is even a wine festival in the city itself, celebrating the region's products held every year in June. And what trip to Catalonia would be complete without seeing Castellers or Human Towers? The town of Valls in Tarragona as well is well known across the country for its Castellers, a typical part of Catalan culture and a must-see for visitors. But although tourism is positive for the Tarragona region, one project in the pipeline has caused controversy. The Hard Rock Hotel and Casino will bring jobs and money to the region, but some people are worried about what the impact on the environment will be, as well as the effects of having a Las Vegas-style casino just outside the city. And with this, we've come to the end of our show, our special edition filmed here at the Tarragona Mediterranean Games of 2018, which run for the rest of the week and next time will be held in 2021 in Oran, Algeria. We leave you with some more footage of the games. We hope you enjoy it and we'll see you tomorrow.